Rev it up and welcome to Cars Yeah, show number 1,176. I think the biggest challenge and stuff like that is being honest with people, you know, getting up in the morning and uh, positive message, nice, fair, good. Don't lie. This is Cars Yeah, where you'll enjoy interviews with inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Mark Green is here to provide you with a fuel injection of automotive inspiration. So get in, sit down, buckle up, and get ready for a wild ride here on Cars Yeah. Hello, automotive enthusiasts. I'm revved up and so excited to introduce today's very special guest calling in from Canada, Joel LaPalm. Joel, are you buckled up and ready for a fun ride? Hey, 100% Mark, looking forward to it. All right. Joe LaPalm is the president of IGL Coatings, the premier developer of easy-to-use, low-odor, high-solids formulations, detailing products for the automotive industry and beyond. Joel's past includes retail management, helping introduce to Canada the big box store, working with companies including Costco and Staples and Aurora Importing. While in semi-retirement, though, Joel was not one to be kept down, and in 2014, he started a small detail shop. And then, in 2015, he created IGL Canada with his business partner. Since then, they have expanded IGL into a worldwide brand, providing detailing chemicals and products to professionals and automotive care enthusiasts around the globe. And I'll let our listeners know, I had the great pleasure of meeting Joel at SEMA this year. It was so fun. In fact, when I was at his booth, I think I met 12 other past car care guests from Cars, yeah, rather, uh, who are detailers who use his products. So it was like homecoming there at IGL's uh, wonderful booth at SEMA. So, Joel, I've told our listeners just a little bit about you. Would you take a brief moment and share a little more about your career, your business, and a very obvious passion for making sure automobiles look spectacular? Thanks, Mark, for the introduction. I'll just correct a little bit of something. Yeah, I am the president of the North American division of IGL Coatings. So, Jeff, my partner, and I, we look after North America, the Caribbeans, and some of Latin America. Chun Chi Kyong, who is the inventor and the worldwide president of IGL Coatings, amazing gentleman. Uh, listen, the company, six continents, 57 plus countries, and uh, you nailed it on everything else. We're having fun making cars shine and protecting them. Absolutely, absolutely. And a lot of my past guests uh, use your products on their customers' cars. And that's why it was so exciting when I walked in your booth and just all of a sudden it was like homecoming there with all these wonderful, great people that have been, uh, mostly all detailers that have been guests here on Cars Yeah. So it was great fun and really great to be able to meet you. As we continue on your journey, though, I always like to start by asking my guests for a success quote or a mantra. This is a nice way to get the inspirational tires turning, or maybe I should say the random orbital polisher wheel spinning here on cars. Yeah. So Joel, (laughs) take the wheel. Well, you know, and, and this is not just in this life, but also in my past life, I guess my mantra would be belonging to the family. Uh, you know, we, we're, we're very different company. Uh, we don't just sell you a product. We help you grow your business. And I think it's kind of unusual in this sort of world, uh, where people are more focused on selling products and moving on. Uh, we're very focused on being part of your life, being part of your family, getting to know you on a personal level, seeing what makes you tick and what doesn't, and trying to help you along. And, you know, you might have, you know, you might be the best detailer in the world, but maybe not the best marketer. Our background is not in the detailing world. Our background is in the business world. So if we can help our detailers on that side, we're very happy to do so. Yeah, that must have been why when I was in your booth, it did feel like homecoming because it felt like a whole bunch of family members in there. I mean, everybody seemed to be very supportive, even though many of the people there might be competitors in some realm. I know they're in different parts of the country, but it just had that vibe. So you guys have pulled that off very well, Joel. It it really did for me while I was standing there. I didn't want to leave the booth. I just wanted to stay there and, uh, <laughs> and keep keep having some fun with all you folks. So well, th- it was thanks, great. Mark. And, and, and you know what? They had a lot of positive things to say about you also, like Jennifer Turcott, Diane Balboni. Uh, you know, we, we the nice thing about IGL is I think we're the, the coding company that has the most female uh, installers in the world right now. So that's kind of cool fact. Well, that's very cool. I've had over almost about 200 women on my show now, and I love having women on my show. In fact, later today, 
I'm interviewing Lonnie Unser. She comes from the uh, famous American racing family, the Unsers, of course, and her father, Johnny, was a guest on my show. And uh, yeah, she's gotten into racing now, so I'm going to have her on the show. I love having women in the business. And um, uh, yeah, the folks you mentioned there are absolutely fantastic. Cool, cool stories. Chris West was there, of course. Mel Craig was there. I mean, yeah, it just yeah. kept growing and growing. So yeah. wonderful, wonderful people. Well, let's go back in time a little bit. Now, you didn't come from the automotive industry, but I've got to think that you do like cars. So maybe there's a story there that instigated this passion you have for cars and making sure they look well. Is there a pivotal moment in your life when you think back that you knew you were going to be a car guy? You know what? It's funny because when I was in high school, like, you know, 16, 17 years old, I, I did it part time. I detailed cars. And then, uh, you know, we grow up, we go to school, we go to university, we do different things. Uh, you know, I led, uh, I led a life in the retail management world. And when I was semi-retired, my wife told me I had to get out of the house. I was driving her nuts. <laughs> so, <laughs> so one thing I did is I went and bought a detail shop in our local town where we live because I've always had a passion for that. You know, and that's, that's what drove me back into the detailing or the car world, if you want. Yeah, very cool. Well, you and I share something then, Joel, because I started my own detailing business around the age of 14. And I did <laughs> that cool? all, yeah, I did that all through junior high and high school and even into college. Actually, that's how I paid for my college education. And even after I got married, I kept doing cars on the weekends, just the cars I liked so that my <laughs> wife and I could save, save up for a house. But, uh, you know, then about 11 years after that, I ended up working at Griot's Garage for 20 years and running that company and developing their car care line. So, yeah, it all kind of came back around. I guess I just love caring for cars. I think that's a, a big part of it, and I still do today, absolutely. Well, what I want to do now is take a look at some of the many roads you've driven down and talk about a big challenge and failure. These are wonderful lessons that teach us valuable things as long as we look at them that way. Did you walk us through one of those times in your life where you were really challenged in some sense? Kind of tell us what that was all about and then tell us how that experience helped you gain even more momentum as you came out of it. You know what? I, I'd have to say that one of the greatest challenges I've had, in, and again, introducing new concepts to a country like Canada, you know, when we talked about box stores, Canadians didn't know what that was. And when we talked about bringing Price Club, which is Costco today, obviously, but when, I, when we brought Price Club to Canada, we had to go around and sell these memberships to people to come to shop <laughs> in our store. Yeah. You know, yeah. they they, lo they looked at me like I was crazy. You, you're going to want me to pay you to be able to go and spend money in your store. Yeah, they, they yeah. weren't getting it. So this was a big, big, big challenge. And the best way that we did it, and, and that actually goes back to cars, believe it or not, Mark, is we used to use the old analogy that Listen, you're going to pay a membership, yes, to shop at Price Club, but you're going to save enough money before even walking in the door. And they used to ask me all the time, well, what do you mean? Well, we have oil changes at Price Club or Costco. You know, we have the garage. You know, you're going to save enough money just on your oil changes to cover the cost of your membership. And then we'd go yeah. over this scenario and the they'd be like, oh, my God, yeah, this is great. So it's kind of funny. <laughs> You know, and again, it's just yeah. using that car thing. But, uh, you know, and I think the biggest challenge and stuff like that is being honest with people, you know, getting up in the morning and uh, positive message, nice, fair, good. Don't lie. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, it's funny you say that because I remember I lived in San Diego when Saul Price came up with Price Club and that's where the company started. You know, I remember people saying, why would I pay to go shop in a warehouse that doesn't even have nice shelves? Everything's still in the crates. And, and yeah, it was such a foreign concept to people. And I think that's what you're talking about is how do you change people's mindset? And, and look at today. People pay memberships to shop at Amazon, right? Amazon oh, Prime. It's great. I mean, yeah, yeah. And super successful. You know, it's, it's incredible. I'm glad you brought up Seoul because everybody thought Price Club was all because of the price. It was actually the guy's name, Soul Price. Yes, yes. So it had nothing yeah. to do with the dollar or the amount. And the funny thing is, Jim Siegel was a VP back then at the time with Price Club. Yes, and and I was on the Canadian side. And Jim said to Soul when he left the company to start Costco, he said, "I'm going to come back and buy you one day," and he did. <laughs> yes, he did. I know it's incredible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's an incredible story. I think he also. Uh, before that was uh, Whiteside, I think was a, a chain of stores that he was involved in. But 
Yeah. Um, I know some people uh, where I grew up, some parents that were early, early investors in that whole Price Club deal, and they made out like bandits. They're, they're doing okay. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they've got the big boats in the private islands yeah, now. So, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah we better, absolutely. We better find them and go coat them for them. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, take care of their boats. So, they, uh, yeah, the salt water doesn't do anything to the finish. It's a great story. I love it. You shared some really valuable things there for people to really kind of look beyond what is happening now. And I love disruptors in the industry. I mean, the Ubers and the Airbnbs and, of course, Amazon, which has just become a juggernaut. And uh, even and you know, Elon coding. Musk with Tesla. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and well, you know, I'm glad you brought that up because I'll tell you, I worked in the car care industry for a long, long time. And I remember when I was still at Grios, that industry was just starting to come on. And, and it was just this weird, like, come on, this is just snake oil somebody's trying to sell. This can't really do what it, it does. And now, even just five, six, seven years later, since I've left that industry, it's incredible how far it's come, right? It's, it's unreal. And, and you know, it's every day you, you see more labels, more brands. Now, yes, there's only, you know, maybe a handful of manufacturers. We are one of them and that. But, uh, yeah, it's unbelievable how many brands are popping up left, right, and center. Yeah, yeah. And it's great. It just adds more competition and everybody keeps evolving a little bit. It's kind of like when microfiber came on the market. 100%. That product, yeah, when that first came out, I remember, I mean, I was pushing all 100% cotton towels to apply and take off wax and dry your vehicles. And then this funky new stuff out of Korea showed up that was really soft and felt really good. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, and, well, uh, and we started and selling. the best part about that microfiber story is the Chinese were starting to buy the microfiber from Korea. They bought so much of it that the Korean, when they needed microfiber, they had to go back to the Chinese to buy it. The world's a crazy place when it comes oh, to marketplaces. Not. It's pretty funny. Well, let's shift gears and talk about a big career aha moment. Uh, maybe it was when you decided to get involved with IGL, but uh, is there a big career aha moment you could share? Absolutely. And, and, and you know, and, and this is a, another life lesson at the same time, I think. You know, having been retired and then going back to work and buying the detail shop, I had a customer come in and ask me for a ceramic coating. Again, I didn't know what it was. In all honesty, I had no clue. So I Googled it and a brand came up. And I reached out to them and, uh, Mark, they told me, no, I couldn't do it. And, uh, to go take a long walk off a short bridge. Well, so why did that, they say that? Well, you know what? It was, it was funny because, uh, I guess I didn't have enough experience because I only had the shop for a year and, and I was cool okay. with that. I, I respected that. And, but yeah. again, being who I was and, you know, launching all these box stores and stuff like that, I said, nah, you know what? I got to learn. So I was determined to learn and I reached out. And then I went online and I found IGL coatings and I reached out to them and I was speaking with the president, uh, Kyung, Chan Chi Kyung. And I said, listen, I'm in Canada and I got somebody needs a coating. And I was wondering if you would help me out. And he says, well, we don't have a Canadian distributor at the time. And I said, OK, no problem. So I bought a kit and he walked me through the whole process over the phone, believe it or not. And we did the car for the lady and she absolutely loved it. All of a sudden, she says, I got two more in my garage. I want done. And then she told her other friends. And then all of a sudden, I had to get back on the phone and call Malaysia. And I said, hey, Kyung, I need more kits. This lady really liked what we did. And he said to me, I don't have a Canadian distributor. I don't know what to do for you. I said, well, I was in the distribution game for 27 years. I said, yeah, I, I can be that person. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know distribution way more than I know detailing. <laughs> yeah. So I yeah. said, what would it take to be the Canadian distributor? He told me. And then, so we, we made that happen. And it was kind of funny because then my partner, Jeff Carey, uh, he was sort of semi-retired and we golfed and curled together, believe it or not. And every, every Thursday night we'd meet on the golf course and I'd say, Hey, are, is your wife giving you a hard time to get back to work a little bit too? He says, yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, well, I have an idea. Why don't you become my partner in this new venture I'm trying out? And he sort of liked that. And, that, and I said, okay, well, this is how much you owe half of what I invested. So, and that, that's how it started. Wow. That's a cool story. I love that. Just yeah. there became a supply need for it or, or a need for it, a demand for it. And you created the supply and just by reaching out to somebody. I mean, listeners, this is a wonderful story of paying attention to opportunity and seeing opportunity and don't take no for an answer. If someone tells you to take a long walk off a short pier, go find another pier to walk on because there will be another one and someone will help you 
uh, just like uh, your supplier does. Uh, that's great. I love this story. Let's have a little bit of fun and talk about your first really special car, that first vehicle in your life that had great meaning. What was that? <laughs> You're going to laugh because it ain't something special, but it was a Ford Maverick. Maverick. I remember those. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Not, not the yep. sexiest. It's not the sexiest car, Mark. Yeah, no, <laughs> but, not really. But you but, know what? But, but it had it had four tires and it went somewhere. So you know what it did, and and it had a block heater, and I could plug it in in the winter time when it got cold. Living in Canada, the best yeah. thing is, is you know what? I was 16 years old. I got my driver's license. I couldn't afford much at the time. We had a neighbor who had passed, and she had an, a Ford Maverick. She was an elderly lady. But the thing only had, I want to say, 2,000 miles, 2, miles on it. And, and I was able to pick it up for like $3,000. Nice. You know, those cars were kind of cool. They, the little coupe, two-door coupe, right? That's exactly what it was. Yeah, kind of. Uh, I mean, I like the way those cars look. They kind of looked a little bit like a Capri the front yeah. end had a little bit, oh, some people are going to laugh at me, almost a little bit of a Camaro-ish look. Now, they were, this was first part of the 70s, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah. you were laughing at yeah. me too, weren't you? But yeah. just, I mean, look at the front of those, you know, and I remember a kid in my high school that had one that was yellow with yellow or yellow with black stripes that, you know, kind of like the rally stripes. They'd always put the stripes yeah. on those slow cars to make them look like they're going faster. Yeah. Um <laughs> But uh, yeah, those were kind of cool. I, I think they were an interesting style exercise for uh, for Ford at the time. It, it was great. You know, you could load up six, seven buddies in it if you made an effort. <laughs> and, and away we went. <laughs> that, that's that's all it was, right? It was it was my go to high school sort of cool car. Yeah. And were those things built on kind of the the Falcon uh, subframe? I think the I believe I think I some believe people they were. Even... Yeah, this was a seventy four. I want to say the car, the year. And, and yeah. I think it was. I think it was that. I think it was the Falcon frame. Yeah, I think it was originally a rear wheel drive platform. So, I it mean, was. they pushed that Falcon frame all through the Mustangs and, yeah. uh, you know, the, all these cars. I mean, they were very efficient in using that platform. Well, it worked. It was good. Yeah. You know, yeah. basic, yeah. great yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's so, solid metal, not plastic like today. Absolutely. Well, how about a car you've let go? Is there a seller's remorse story in your life that you wish you had back? Uh, I did have a Mustang at one time. It was, a, I want to say, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was a 75. It was 83 Fox body. It was an 83. Oh, the Fox body. Okay. Yeah. 83 Fox body. It had the square lights at the front. This was a T-bar, you know, a, a nice car. And, uh, I, I did have remorse to the point that, uh, my wife and I found one four years ago, three years ago, and we bought it and we had it shipped to uh, to our home from Vancouver. So from the other side of the country. So we have it now. And uh, this winter, it's actually going away to get restored and painted. Very cool. Very nice. I love it. Well, good. Yeah. Well, yeah. You, so you solved the seller seller's remorse issue. That's a nice way to do it. Well, I would love for you to uh, share with our listeners a lot more about IGL coding. So all the different kinds of things that you guys offer and sell. Uh, a little bit of how people can learn more about it and get their hands on it. So uh, give us give us some uh, up to date, and also what has you excited about the coming new year? Sure. So, well, first of all, uh, this SEMA was the best SEMA we've ever had. Super excited. Uh, the booth was hopping from the time the doors opened to the time they ended. You know, it was just nice to nice to see people and again family. You know, IGL is uh, it, it actually stands for I Green Lover. It's kind of like a, a weird, a weird name. Uh, but when it was created, Kyung had uh, certain things in mind when they created the brand. The three major things were ease of application, it needed to work, and detailer safety. Those were the three key factors. The nice thing about IGL is its technology partners, so Dupont, Bear, Shinitsu, Wacket, and BASF. So not little guys, big guys. And, and these are these are people that got in got in with Kyung and and really worked at developing uh, the products and and the chemicals and stuff like that. The beauty about it is is IGL started in 2008, but they didn't sell their first product till 2014. Mark six years of R and D. Wow, incredible! It, it is, and you know what? They really focused on getting their certificates, and you know, we just just before SEMA. I think uh, August, September, IGL uh, 
became ISO 9001215 certified manufacturing facility. Oh wow, uh, that's very important. We're, yeah, we're one. We're one of the only ones in the detailing industry that have that that recognition that now. Ranking which is pretty and rating. Cool. Yeah, yeah, very which cool. Is pretty cool. So the best thing is is at low or zero VOCs. You know, we don't want people to be breathing in anything harsh that's going to get into their lungs or whatever. Very easy to apply, like I said. The best example I can give is if we look at our all-purpose cleaner. You know, everybody's all-purpose cleaner is all chemical-based. Ours is right. soy, soy-based. Cool. So, that's again, very cool. just to give yeah. that spin. So, I always give the analogy that, uh, you know, if I go to Walmart, I go to the grocery section, you know, you got your Coke, your Pepsi, and all your grocery items. With us, we you'd have to go to the diet section. So, I always say we're the only diet brand of detailing products on the marketplace today. So that's how I <laughs> cool. analyze it, right? So yeah, you know, and, that's and, cool. and, and it's becoming more and more important. I find that women, especially pregnant women or women in general, they want to know what is it you're using to clean my car? What are you putting in my car? And it's kind of neat. And uh, the reaction is great. It's all in all, it's a great product coming out with new lines. We have everything from automotive to marine to industrial commercial. IGL has saw an opening this year. Well, we saw it actually a year and a half ago uh, on the side-by-side market. You know, the four-wheelers that drive around the deserts? Yes, yeah. Uh, so it, it's a market that we're actually really focusing on for 2019. I think it's going to be a, a very, very huge market for our company. You know, and there's a need there. There's a big need. Exactly. So, yeah, so we're just trying to do things differently. Do you guys sell primarily to detailers or can at home do it yourself or consumers buy your product? Well, you know what? Thanks for asking that question. We primarily sell to detailers. We do also offer our product line, except we do not offer certain products on AutoGeek. You can buy IGL on AutoGeek. There's other sites also. Our detailers actually sell our product to their consumers, to their customers. Uh, The only thing that they're not allowed to sell to the DIY market is our paint coatings. We Mm -hmm. don't allow our paint coatings to be installed by no one but professional installers. So you can buy buy everything. to that, right? Well, yeah. And you know what? It all comes down to, and and you being from Griots, you're going to understand this very well. It all comes down to the paint correction, right? So if I go to a, you know if I go to a cars and coffee and I see a car and it's full of swirls and everything and it looks like you know whatever uh dogs uh, dogs breakfast I don't want I I I wouldn't want the, somebody to say hey what's on that car I wouldn't want them to say IGL so that's why we we only deal with professionals that number one can can do a proper paint correction that can make the car look the way it's supposed to look and then the application of the coating goes on. So, you know, a lot of people get upset with us for that fact, but I think that uh, I know that our detailers respect it and uh, and appreciate it. And uh, again, we try to drive the business back to our family members and help them grow their business by applying the coating. Yeah, makes all the sense in the world. And having come from developing car care lines like I have, it's, it, I would say it's akin to uh, painting. I mean, you can be the best paint sprayer on the planet, but if you've not prepped the surface first, it's just like if you go to paint your house and you don't prep that surface first and clean it well, and you just start painting over bugs and dirt and crud and peeling paint, it won't oh, look yeah. good. It won't stay on the surface. And I know these coatings do take a certain type of uh, of expertise, I should say, to put them down correctly. Um, and yeah, you're right. You need to take all those uh, swirl marks out. And by paint correction, what Joel's talking about, if those of you who go paint correction, what does he mean? Is taking all the scratches out of the paint by polishing. And you can do that in a variety of ways. You can start with cleaning and paint cleaning clays, but then it's mostly polishing and perfecting that paint, cutting the paint down a little bit to the bottom of all those scratches. So you've got a, just a glass smooth surface, shiny surface to start with. And then you seal that great surface. And then everything will stay as is for a very, very long time. Very cool. Very exciting. And I'll make sure I put links to IGL's website on Joel Shono's page on the Cars Yow website. Here's a very introspective question for you, Joel. If you woke up tomorrow and you were manifested into a vehicle parked in a garage, what would Joel be and why? Oh, wow. Uh, You know what? I think Joel would probably be some type of SUV. (laughs) Okay. Okay. I'm not a little guy. (laughs) 
I'm a, I'm, you know, I'm a, I'm a solid <laughs> guy. I played hockey a long time. You, you know, I'm built to, to go, go in the bush, come out of the bush. Somebody who's not going to get stuck. I'm ready for all weather, all seasons. Somebody can get the job done. No doubt, though, he would be a very shiny SUV, for oh, sure. 100, 100%. 100%. <laughs> there you go. You bet. So, Joel, up next is the last lap. Before we put the pedal to the metal, let's say thank you to today's Cars Yeah sponsors. Do you know the best way to protect your vehicle, both the exterior and the interior, is with a car cover? I've been using Covercraft car covers since 1975. That's right. 1975. It's a fast, easy, and inexpensive way to keep your vehicle looking new. Covercraft has been manufacturing premium quality exterior and interior covers for over 50 years with a stellar reputation for durability and design. They're the world's largest manufacturer of custom patterned vehicle covers that are crafted to fit over 80,000 patterns and growing. They are the only cover I'll put on my vehicles. You can choose from a wide variety of fabrics, styles, colors, and more. From full cover designs for factory to custom-made vehicles, plus convertible top covers, trucks, truck cab coolers, motorcycles, scooters, ATVs, trailers, campers, personal watercraft, and a wide variety of custom features. Covercraft is the right choice. Learn more today at Covercraft.com and tell them Mark sent you. That's Covercraft.com. What's every automotive enthusiast dream? to design and build that perfect garage. My friends at Metron Garage are a group of creative talents who've combined their passion for cars with their careers in architecture. Their service includes unique garage design and state-of-the-art fabrication. They will create the coolest custom garage for you and your vehicles. Metron Garage's system features fully engineered commercial-grade material and structural framing that's stronger than traditional construction. Their designs are pre-engineered to meet your building codes for fast, bolt-together construction. With over 25 years of experience, you'll see a 3D rendering to visualize your custom garage, and the final structure will fulfill all your storage needs. Contact Metron Garage today and begin realizing your dream garage. Go to metrongarage.com. That's metrongarage.com. Garage is built for discerning enthusiasts. Where it's not just a garage. It's where your dream garage comes true. Okay, Joel, we are back and we're entering the last lap. I'm going to fire off a series of questions and ask you to give our listeners some very quick blips of the throttle answers. So here we go. What's the best automotive advice you've ever received? Make sure you change your oil on a regular basis. Especially if you live up in the cold Canadian area where it gets a little chilly. Yeah, yeah your dad always important. told you every 5,000 kilometers, every 5,000 kilometers, you yeah. either don't change it. Yeah, yeah, it's really cheap insurance. It's amazing how many people don't do that anymore. It's just, ah, uh, when I see these commercials, oh, this oil will take you 20,000 miles. I just roll my eyes and go, maybe it will, but don't do it. <laughs> Don't yeah, do it. think of all the other problems you, it's going to cause. Yeah. Would you share one of your personal habits you believe has contributed to your many successes over the years? You know what? The biggest habit that I have, and people always ask me, hey, how did you get to where you got to, or how did you achieve what you achieved? And I always tell people, get up in the morning. Yeah. You know, yep. that, that's that's the most important thing. You know, I I wake up, I'm my glass is half full. I'm always ready to go. And early, early bird gets to warm. That's my attitude. So you, you got to, you got to be there. Yep. Get up and start moving your feet. When I had Adam Carolla on the show, that's something he said. He goes, you know what? When I get up in the morning and I get up early, I just start moving and I don't stop until I lay down late at night. (laughs) You just keep going. 100%. 100%. Yeah, absolutely. Work hard. That's all it takes, kids. Just work hard. Do you have a resource that you'd like to share with our listeners? My resources are my mentors. So I think mm. that anybody out there who's listening that's wanting to grow or wanting to become better at what they're doing, either business-wise or detailing-wise, or take a look around, find yourself one or two mentors. And you know what? Don't be shy. Give them a call. Say, hey, you know what? I respect what you do. I see what you're doing. And would I be able to lean on you a little bit? Like maybe pick up the phone and call you once a month and use you as a mentor. I think that's the biggest problem is people don't do that enough. They, Mm. they want to, but they just think that, Oh, he's too busy. I'm going to, you know, and and it's the opposite. I think 
people feel proud that they're like, I have a couple of people that I mentor and when they've called me and asked me, uh, you know, it makes me feel proud that somebody would even look at me in that light. So yes. I, I think that don't be shy, find yourself a mentor or two uh, for different reasons. You know, I could go to, since I don't come from the detailing background, I could go to a guy like Rennie Doyle, who I could say, Rennie, I need you to be my mentor when I, when I have questions in regards to this, or I could yep. go to somebody else when it's more business side, right? Yeah, exactly. It's great advice. And of course, Rennie Doyle, another great past Cars Yeah guest, ran into him at SEMA as well. That guy's full of energy. Oh my gosh. Yeah, I got to figure he out what gets, he, eats he and gets drinks. up in the morning and goes. His legs start moving. He does. He gets up early yeah. for sure. Now, if I could arrange for you to have a drink with anyone in the automotive industry, living or deceased, who would that be? You know what? I'd love to have a drink with Jay Leno. That'd be fun. Yep. <laughs> you, know, you know why? I, I think he's got probably one of the coolest collections going. I saw him at SEMA. I didn't get a chance to meet him. He was very busy, obviously. Uh, and that's why I think if I could have a drink with him, then I get a little bit of one on one time, right? So yeah, that would probably yeah. be, I, I just like to pick his brain because he's like myself. You know what I mean? He's not necessarily from that world. Him, it was a passion mm-hmm. that just grew into a collection. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, great guy. I've been trying to get him on this show forever. It's very challenging to reach him, but I'll get him one of these days. My listeners have heard that now. My listeners have learned that now for four years, and uh, I've handed him my business card probably four times now, but uh, one of these days, one of these days, I'll get Jay on the show. Can't wait. Now, how about a book? Is there a book that you've read that you think our listeners would enjoy reading? It's a Canadian author, uh, David Chilton, and it's called Wealthy Barber. Hmm. That's a new book listed here. What's that about? So it's just a business book, but it, it's been on the, uh, actually, America's bestseller, uh, New York Times bestselling list also. It's just a really, really, really interesting business book, and it takes you on a different spin. And I would highly recommend it to anybody who is looking at growing their business or growing themselves personally. David mm-hmm. is uh, is an amazing guy. He also participates on a show called uh, Dragons Den, so which is Shark Tank in uh, the U.S. Yes, but in yes. Canada, uh-huh. Dragons Den. And actually, the guys that started Shark Tank were from the Dragons Den. They were two Canadians, right? So, you know, yeah. so that, yeah, so that 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 would be the book that I would uh, recommend. Wealthy Barber. Love it. Well, uh, I love business books, so I'm glad you recommended that. And listeners, you can find all these great resources that Joel has shared with us today on his Cars yeah show notes page. Just go to CarsYeah.com, type in Joel LaPalme, L-A-P-A-L-M-E, and that page will pop right up with a reference to this great book. All right, we're up to the checkered flag here, Joel, and this last question can be a bit of a doozy. Today, I'm going to buy you any cool collector car on the planet. Money is no object today, so don't worry about that. But here are the rules. You can't sell it to buy a bunch of other toys with. You've got to keep it, and you've got to drive it and enjoy it. So be careful what you choose. What would you like? I'm going to say it wrong. I know I am. So you're you're going to have to help (laughs) me. You're going to have to help me, Mark. (laughs) I am going to help you. Don't worry, Joel. I'm here for Uh, you, buddy. The guy's name is Christian Von Koenigsegg. Koenigsegg. Yes, Koenigsegg. Yes. See, I know I the car you're talking about. I was going to say it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know uh, yeah, boy. Yeah. That would be the car. If you're paying for it, that's the one I'm going. Ouch. You're an expensive date, my friend. Oh, my <laughs> gosh. Yeah. The Koenigsegg. Uh, yeah. Pretty spectacular cars. I'd love to have Christian as a guest on the show here. I've had a designer from their business on the show, but uh, Love to get him. He's another guy that moves at lightning pace, so it's very hard to track him down. He's very busy. But uh, Tony said, yeah, incredible cars. They had uh, uh, several of those on the lawn at Quail this past summer during Car Week. Um, Yeah, hyper supercar, very, very unique, very, very fast, and very, very expensive. Thanks a lot. Very limited. Very limited. (laughs) Yeah, and limited, too. Yeah, it has. it does it all. It does it all. So. Well, since you live up there where it snows half of the year, maybe you should keep it down here at my house, and you could come down and drive it any time you want. How does that sound? <laughs> well, it would be a great it would be a great thing because you'd have it for six months, and I'd come and get it for six months. Yeah, no problem. I take good care of it. I know how to detail cars. I keep it really shiny. When you 
Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We'll teach you how to apply IGL coatings. <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. That that car deserves IGL coating, absolutely for sure. Well, Joel, you've taken me on a great ride today. I knew this would be fun. I've really enjoyed your stories. I want to thank you for sharing your journey with the Cars Yeah audience. Did you offer me one parting piece of wisdom or guidance before you rip off into the sunset in that kind of thing? You know what? Be positive. Don't be negative. Don't look at bullying. Let's get that out of the world and uh, let's have fun. It, you know, I always say I'm going to do this until I stop having fun. When I stop having fun, I'm going to go back to being retired. And I don't see going back to being retired for a long time because I am having a blast right now. And I hope that that just continues. Absolutely. It certainly comes through. And what's the best way for our listeners to follow along with you and learn more about IGL Coatings? On Instagram, we have IGL uh, underscore uh, North underscore America. You can uh, follow us at uh, uh, IGLCoatingsUSA.com. So C-O-A-T-I-N-G-S-U-S-A.com. We're also on Facebook. We have many uh, social media pages on Facebook. We're, we're pretty easy to get a hold of. Me personally, Jay Lapalm at IGLCoatingsUSA.com. And, uh, you know, my number is 647-456-7764. Anybody feel free to call me anytime. There you go. And Joel, pick up the phone too. I promise you. Listeners, you can find links to everything Joel has shared again at his Cars Yeah show notes page. Just go there and check it out. I encourage you to check out IGL. If you have a special car that you want protected, I'm sure they can find a uh, very skilled craftsman in your area to apply their coatings and uh, make your car look like a thousand bucks. Absolutely. Joel, thanks for being so generous today with your time, your expertise, and for sharing your experiences with the Cars Yeah listeners. Until you and I talk again, I'll see you down the road. Thanks a lot. eh? I appreciate everything. Been fun. You take care of your cars, but who takes care of your investments? Tune-ups aren't just for engines. Updating your financial plan is important, too. Your GPS may take you from A to B, but it won't help you on the road to financial freedom. For that, you need a good co-pilot and a very trusted advisor. Chris Kimball, CFP, is just the man for the job. He'll guide you down that road without driving you crazy. For over 25 years, Chris has helped people just like you and me with their financial planning and investments. With a master's degree in financial services, he is eminently qualified, and he's a car guy too. Learn more at chrisvkimball.com or call 866-ON-A-PLAN. Securities through Money Concepts Capital Corp., Member Finra Sipic. CK Financial Services is not affiliated with Money Concepts Capital Corp. Thank you so much for joining us on today's ride here at Cars Yeah. Drive on over to CarsYeah.com to find show notes and inspiring automotive fun. Download your free copy of Filler Up, a fun book filled with gorgeous photographs of fuel filler fun, including quotes from more inspiring automotive enthusiasts. Download your copy today, and we'll see you next time on Cars Yeah!